today I'm going to show you how to make your own wobble node that you can use on any animation in DaVinci Resolve. And if you don't think that's very exciting, then hold my- Now if you're looking for something that you can just drag and drop on the edit page, there's already a great solution for that. Mr. Alex Tech has developed this plugin called Magic Animate. A lot of people are already familiar with it, but if you're not, I'll put a link somewhere in the description on the screen. Or if you're looking for some kind of like handheld camera shake motion, Mr. Jay Lippman has got you covered with that one. What I'm talking about is a free floating wobble animation. Something that gives your PNGs, your images, or whatever you have floating on screen that floaty feeling. So let me show you how to make it and how to save it as a macro so that you can search it up and use it anytime you want. Alrighty, so we are in DaVinci Resolve. I have a 1080p 60 frame per second timeline open. I work in 60 frames per second because I like to make my life harder than it needs to be. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up top here to effects and create a new fusion composition. You don't need to do a fusion composition for this. It's just, I need I need something to work with. So got our fusion composition. I'm gonna go ahead and hop into the fusion page. Now, if you're newer to the fusion page and you wanna learn a little bit more about how things work inside here, I actually have a separate video that takes a little bit more time to explain the ins and outs of fusion. But let's go ahead and build out our composition. So I'm gonna start with a background node. Go ahead and connect that to my media out. And I'm gonna make this transparent. You don't gotta make it transparent. I'm just gonna make mine transparent. And then the image that I'm gonna be working with today is our nice little shark guy. So I'm gonna drag and drop that in, connect it, and there we go, boom. Now if I wanted to, I could hit control space and start to type in wobble, and you see that I already have my own little wobble node here that I saved. That's what we're gonna end up getting to. I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And what I want you to do is to hit control space and add a transform node. And you want the one with XF in the parentheses. Go ahead and add that. And all we're really gonna do is one thing. I want you to go up top, right click on the center XY property, go to modify width, and then we want perturb. You can see we've already got some motion going on here. And if I were to play our composition from the beginning, you can see, woo, <laughs> we got some motion. Now by adding the perturb modifier, we've done two things. One, we've unlocked our modifier tab. We've moved on to the next level here. And two, we've essentially just introduced random motion. So you can actually apply the perturb modifier to any property that you'd like. So if you want, you could right click on the size, go to modify width, and then go down to perturb. And then your image is gonna grow and shrink in size as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my modifiers tab and we've got a few settings that we can play with. And these are the settings that I have found give a very subtle floating feel. Obviously you can increase or decrease things depending on how you want your own wobble to look. For the X and Y scale, I'm gonna change this to 0 0.25, 0 0.25. I'm gonna leave the random seed alone for now. And then for the strength, I'm gonna change this to 0 0.2, the wobble, amount we're gonna leave at one, and the speed we're actually gonna to change to 0.2. Now, it's not gonna be dramatic motion, but that's not what I'm going for when I play this back. I really just want this to kind of subtly move on our domain. So let me go ahead and play this. You can see our, our buddy, he's just, you know, he's kind of wiggling back and forth. Couple quick things that I wanna mention. One, you'll notice that I put our transform node after our merge node. What can happen is if you put your transform node and attach it to your media node or whatever you're trying to animate, the domain on your media node might be smaller than your background. So you see how our background is 1920 by 1080 P and our media in is 608 by 705, so it's smaller. And what can happen is if you put your transform node and you connect it to the media in without the larger domain in mind, you can start to get some clipping. I'm not gonna have this issue because DaVinci is pretty smart with how it does the transform nodes. So you're not gonna have any issues if you've just got like one or two things, but on larger compositions, you could run into a couple of issues. And now if we wanted to, we could also add a small amount of rotation. Now I'm back on the tools tab of our transform node. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on the angle Go to modify width, and instead of perturb, I'm gonna hit shake. And now the shake modifier is very similar to the perturb modifier, except that they have slightly different controls. You can think of the perturb modifier as something that just generates randomness. And the shake modifier will give you some bounds. So it'll give you a minimum and maximum value that your property can bounce back and forth between. So when I'm looking at the minimum and maximum value for our shake 
angle modifier. It's saying right here that our minimum angle that'll go to is zero degrees and the maximum is one degrees. And again, you can make this as big or as little as you want to. Let's maybe go to like negative 15 and 15 so that you can see this effect. And now when I play this back, it's gonna start to have some wonky rotation. So if we wanna smooth this out, let me go back to our transform node, modifiers, shake. All I'm gonna do is actually increase our smoothness to anywhere between like 50 and 100. So I don't know, maybe we go 75. And I'm gonna decrease these angles to maybe like negative five and five. Let's go ahead and play that back. And again, the motion is really small, but that's okay, that's what I want. I want it to feel like it's just kind of floating in space. Okay, and so the last setting that I'm actually gonna turn on, and this one is completely optional, is you can go over to your settings, back in our tools tab on our transform node, go to your settings and turn on motion blur. I'm a sucker for motion blur, it does eat up a lot of resources, but I like to have it on. And especially if I started to increase the strength of our wobble, I don't know, I just, I feel like it makes it look smoother. I like it, you don't have to turn it on, okay? But that is it. So if that's all you were looking for, go ahead and use it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to save this so that you can use it anytime you want and you don't have to reset up your modifiers. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna create a macro in DaVinci. And the word macro might be intimidating for somebody who's never done it before, but I promise, it, well, it is a little bit intimidating, but I'll be here. I'll be, I'll be here and I'll show you exactly what you need to do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go onto our transform node and I'm gonna right click it and I'm gonna go to macro, create macro, okay? Don't be, don't be alarmed. This window pops up and yeah, this it can be a little bit overwhelming, but all that we're looking at here is our transform node and every single property that we could save for future use. So you'll see we have our center, size, down here's the angle. All we're gonna do is we're gonna tick on the modifier properties that we wanna use so that we can save those settings for future use. So I'm gonna walk you through what we're gonna turn on and how we're gonna save it. So you're gonna wanna leave the output and input boxes on because we need to be able to input something and we want it to output something as well. And for these basic controls, you don't actually have to turn any of these on. If you want to, feel free. Like if you wanted to have the ability to flip your image horizontally or vertically, or you wanted to mess with some of the edge settings, it's perfectly fine. But I'm actually gonna leave all of these unchecked. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna expand the common controls and I'm gonna scroll down until I see our motion blur settings because I do want the ability to turn on and off our motion blur. So I'm gonna go ahead and tick on motion blur, quality, shutter angle, center bias, sample spread. This one is completely optional, but this is one that I like to have the ability to mess with when I want to. And I'm gonna scroll back up and collapse our common menu and the controls menu. You can see that we actually have our perturb and shake modifiers here. So I'm gonna expand the perturb modifier. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tick on every one of these controls in the perturb section. So I'm gonna tick on value, X scale, Y scale, random seed, VC, stream. Speed, all right, there we go. Okay, and now I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but for the shake modifier. So I'm gonna go ahead and expand that. Now by default, it has the position and the Y value ticked on. I'm not sure why, if somebody's a little bit more knowledgeable in DaVinci, they can maybe explain to me why these are turned on, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn those off. Well, the ones that we do want are gonna be our random seed, our reseed, we want smoothness, and then we're looking for X minimum and X maximum. Go ahead and turn those on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and change our macro name and this is gonna be the name that actually appears on the node when you bring it into DaVinci Resolve. So I'm gonna change this to Wobble V2 because I already have a V1. And then we just gotta save it. Let's go up top, these three dots, save as. If it doesn't take you to this directory, I'll leave a file path in the description somewhere so that you can try to get there yourself. But it should take you right here and then if you wanna save it in a folder, you can see I've already got a couple. I've got one for Dax and Peach because holy crap, I love those guys. And then I have my own folder right here. I'm gonna go in here. You see, I've already got some macros in there as well. And hit save. And now we can close this. And now you're good to go. So if I want to, I can hit control space, wobble. And you can see there, there's our guy, there's our guy right there. We got wobble v2 and enter. Let me go ahead and delete this transform node. Insert our wobble v2 node. There we go. Now if I select our wobble node, you can see in the inspector tab, we have all those properties that we turned on in our macro. So 
We can change our center point. We can change the strength of our translation and also of our angle rotation. Now, the last thing that I'm gonna say, and the reason why we added that random seed property is, say for instance, we've got three things that we want floating here in space. And I've attached our wobble node to all of them. Well, if I hit play, they are all gonna move in unison, which could be what you want. But if you want them feeling like they're moving separately and independently of each other, just go to your wobble node and reseed your position and angle. And now when I hit play, they're all gonna move independently of each other. And if for some reason you want to edit this macro, go up to macro, find your macro, and you can bring up that menu and re-edit some of those properties. Hope that helped and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.